bottom to the top hoops what we like to do is we like to basically put you on to what's going on creating highlight reels what we are setting the platform up for kids that are not on the radar where we can give them a look and get them a look all right and log on to that bottom to the top hoops.com how was it being able to be in a situation where the coach gave you the keys early you're able to set records win two state championships, two city championships. Was it like you walked into a game and you knew like, yo, whoever it is, this is, we get into it. Cause the CHSA wasn't watered down back then. It's Christ the King, St. Ray's, Bishop Lachlan. Like, what was that journey like navigating through the CHSAA? You didn't come by those thousand and a thousand just showing up. New York and you know, people try to create an event and watching, you know, other players' documentaries like Felipe and Ron mm -hmm. and seeing those high school footages, the games turned into an event. It wasn't... It wasn't for show. Sure. It wasn't. But for us, if you were that top dude, mm -hmm. you knew people were coming to see you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But internally, you felt like you had things to prove. So you have the responsibility of being a guy who's carrying a mantle and you talk about pressure. Like Kenny Anderson, Arnold Bernard, Rod Strickland, Pearl Washington, Kenny Smith, Mark Jackson. Like you in the conversation, I don't know that conversation. You in the McDonald's All-American conversation, Rice High School, that history, city, state championship. Like, is it fun? Is it sometimes overwhelming? Is it sometimes you like, man, this is just too much? I always had something to prove because I was smaller. Okay. So okay. I always had that chip on my shoulder like, I'm going to make everybody respect me. By the time I, this game is over, mm -hmm. y'all going to say, that dude was the best player on this floor. Mm -hmm. So I got a kick out of that, like for me. Was like, it fun going in? Like It, was, it was fun. It, it, even like games at Rice, like I said, like it was a game that turned into an event. So when we came in the locker room, everybody was dressed. I already had a pair of Jordans that probably come out in three months. <laughs> right. So it, it was part of the whole like, of course. you know what I mean? I would tell the manager, yo, one of the managers, yo, but it's looking like out there, the temperature. You know what I mean? I gotta, I gotta see the temperature. Like, right, right. Now I can get into my mode. Yeah, yeah. Come back, yo, it's crazy out there. Standing okay. room only. Yo. Okay, zone in, let's go. All right, I'm gonna set the stage. You in high school, rivalry between St. Ray's and Rice. You coming back to the Bronx. Your area pretty much, right? What are the games like between St. Ray's and Rice in that during that time frame? It's intense. I mean, you gotta understand we all know each other. So And they got something to prove. They got something to prove, but it's funny because I played with them in the summertime. Bronx Ravens. With the Ravens. So Gary DeCesar set it up throughout them years mm -hmm. for them not to like me, but to like me <laughs> during that time period. Right. And it's funny because we all still close friends now. Right, but right, absolutely. It was, uh, we knew to draw the line when it came game time, it was no friends. As soon as the games was over, but that, it was cool. But those rivalries and those games, people don't even understand. Like, just from the basketball that you would see, the, the, the amount of scheming that you have to do as a, as a coach, because there's so much familiarity of, of you knowing what people do, their tendencies, what they do, what they like. So you got to be that much better to be able to get off on people that know you. So fast forward now, McDonald's All-American, bunch of accolades. You get an opportunity pretty much probably to pick your school of choice. Mm -hmm. Everybody was probably on you. Yeah. Why Seton Hall? Why Tommy Amica? What did, what did that process look like? Well, job of recruiting, I would say that. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the gift for the gab, you know how to talk, mm -hmm. smooth dude. Right. But, uh, I mean, it was something close to home. Okay. Which my family always came and supported. Yes. It was at every game. Um, I had opportunity to go to UCLA, to mm -hmm. UConn, to... I could have went anywhere I really wanted. Mm -hmm. The thing about it was... Eddie Griffin wanted to play with me. And at the time, he was the number one player in the country. Mm. So... Which I developed that bond at? Um, in camp, at ABCD camp. Okay, gotcha. 
And probably before that, we seen each other play. We played against each other. He played with mm -hmm. the uh, players. Mutual respect. Yeah, so it was just like, yo, mm -hmm. damn, dude, That'll getting everybody the ball. And, you know what I mean? I would love to play with him. And then mm -hmm. it got serious when we went to camp, and we literally tore camp up. Okay. And at that point, he was like, look, if I'm going to college, I'm playing with you. I don't care where you're going, I'm playing with you. So for him, he a Philly guy. He mm -hmm. went to Roman Catholic, Rasheed Wallace, was before him. Yep. So all of Philly wanted him to go to the Temple. It was only two schools that they would respect that he had went to. Temple or North Carolina. Okay. He loved Seton Hall. He loved Seton Hall from the beginning. He that's where he wanted to go. Mm. Me, I'm like, all right, Tommy you keep coming to see me. I'm kinda cool off Seton Hall though. You know what I mean? Like I watch Sha and Sha I, I love, you know, Sha since Sha was in high school. I used to mm -hmm. watch him play against Steph and mm -hmm. and all those guys and Sha was probably one of the dudes that I looked up to mm -hmm. at the time. But that was Seton Hall wasn't somewhere that I was thinking about. Because it wasn't it wasn't glamorous. Nah, it wasn't glamorous. And it, they the was gym wasn't crazy. It was I mean, Tommy was changing everything. Of course, but it had to. Stu it was in the works. Exactly. So you was like, okay, go somewhere that's already established. Go to Kentucky. Go to UCLA. Go to North Carolina, or go and build my own. Mm -hmm. What do you think the determining factor was? I'm gonna tell you. So UCLA was. That was somewhere that I was really thinking. Steve Lavin at the time was the coach, mm -hmm. and I told him, I said, Coach, um, I love the school. I haven't even been there yet, but I just love your energy and everything. Mm -hmm. I want to take a visit, but there's a dude that wants to play with me. Mm -hmm. So he's like, who? I'm like, Eddie Griffin. And this is when I knew he was serious, but it was just like me and Eddie had a bond where it was mm -hmm. just like, we knew that if we went to college together. It would be beneficial for both. Yeah. Steve Lavin told me, he said, yeah, you know, Eddie Griffin, he, he, he a great player. I would never say no, but we need you. You the piece that we need. And at the time, they had... Number one player in the country. Yeah, he's no, cool. Yeah, that's what... Uh, yeah, the number one player, he's, he's cool. Like, yeah. But uh, as long as that's going to get you here. And mm -hmm. they had... Uh, I can see why he said that, because they had Dan Kazarek, who played in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Jason Capono played in the NBA. At the time, I think Earl Watson was just leaving. Mm -hmm. Um... They had like four or five dudes that was pros. Mm -hmm. So I understood where he was coming from, where it was like, you was the piece to make this thing go. Mm -hmm. Bringing him along might mess up the little, the mm -hmm. chemistry, but we'll, we'll bring him along right. if you want to. Like, right, right. And that's when I was like, damn, like, okay. Mm -hmm. They're serious about, you know, bringing right. me. But the only thing was that it was just, Going to California all the way from New York wasn't something that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. many New York players did. Like, you right. stayed kind of regional. Uh, yeah, or North Carolina is the furthest you go. Mm -hmm. So, for me, I was just like, all right, you know, Eddie was like, look, what Let's we going to do? So, the whole concept of that was like, Eddie couldn't commit before me because the whole Philly wouldn't accept it. But if I did it, then it was like, Oh, I see right. now it's acceptable. You going over here with him? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, got it. Our blessings go on. Like. So now you go to the hall. Here's a funny story. I believe they went to the tournament the year before, right? Mm -hmm. Tashan is at the point. Mm -hmm. Y'all come in, you Eddie Tony L. Who played the two for y'all? The scorer, the ball head kid, Darius Lane. He was he was the he was a machine, mm -hmm. he was a strong dude. And now y'all come in, all this acclaim, they turn the seat and hold basketball around. How does it go in practice where here's a guy who, Ty kind of won the job. Mm -hmm. Take them to the NCAA tournament. Here you come as a much celebrated McDonald's All-American. So I'm sure he's sitting there, there waiting for you to come in like, right? It's funny because he wasn't. And that, and that was kind of stirred up the issue. Mm. Because he just came off of the good run in the Sweet 16 when mm -hmm. Sha got hurt. Mm -hmm. And when summer school was over, see, when I graduated, the next day I was at campus. Because I was already starting to, I wanted to live. I wanted to play with them dudes. I wanted to get a feel of what college was. Mm. It's free. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't. Yeah, I'm in summer school now. Like, I'm in, I enrolled in summer school. Mm -hmm. 
two two days after graduating from high school. Mm -hmm. So you had to play around. I'm not, because I, I already knew, as far as coming from Rice, competition mode. I know there's good players there. I'm going to be prepared and ready. Mm -hmm. So I need to see what the field is looking like before mm -hmm. I get there. Right. So I went up there, summer school. Ty, because I don't know, maybe he was... You know, excited about Six the season. Weeks, He's not from New York, I'm so Gucci in Georgia. He go, he go back to the crib. So for him, he's back in Georgia, enjoying you know the love, yeah, which I respect it. Like you, you a junior now. Mm -hmm. You you don't you're just your, coming back. I get there when I get there. I, I'm coming in there. I'm hungry. I'm trying to, and it just so happened that it was a blessing for me because Sha was still there, because Sha was working out for the draft. Mm. So. My competition wasn't against Ty. I'm going head to head with Shy every day. As a freshman, as an incoming freshman. And he's a senior. And Shy is going on. And he's hungry because he came back off his injury. injury. So now me and him going head to head. And it's funny because we're so much alike in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And on and off the court. Yeah. So day one, you know how New York is. Mm -hmm. We playing pickup. Somebody don't like a call. They're like they walking with the ball. Shy trying to do that to me. Now, you got to understand, you got other juniors and seniors, guys that play with Shy. Shy been the leader for the whole time. Mm -hmm. So, when Shy say something, everybody like, oh, I'm coming in there, New York mentality. What you mean no, no call? Give me the ball, like, you know what I mean? So, we in there with our two New York mentalities, mm -hmm. we bumping heads. Right. right. But, it but was it was great for me, and it was great for them to see this kid ain't scared of nobody. But listen to this, though, man. Teachable moment. Here it is. Previous in the interview, you said this is somebody you looked up to. Somebody you watched. But none of that mattered when you stepped up there and you're trying to establish yourself and we're competing. And I think that's sometimes what people don't understand. It's like there is no loyalty. There is no you're, you're entitled to something. There is no here's the keys. It's go improve yourself and basketball will tell the truth about what's supposed to be. Exactly. So Tyshawn comes back from Georgia. First of all, they call him Ty. <laughs> For real. Darius Lane, all them. Sam Dellenberg, they're like, yo, come come back up here. Like, you better get back up here. This little dude is for real. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm good. He come to the second semester, semester right before when it transitions into preseason. Mm -hmm. By then, I'm seasoned up. I'm ready. You're I'm ready for the season. Because I done had the whole, what, month or two, and I'm sparring with Sha. Mm. And Sha is teaching me so much stuff. It's a totally different type and, of player. A, than. Exactly. So Sha is seasoned in the Big East, probably one of the better guards in the Big East, and he's going on to graduate. And I'm sparring every day with him. Working out with him, pick up. I'm lifting, I'm getting stronger, I'm seeing things that he's do he's doing that I can get away with now. Now I'm starting to put the pieces together of what he's doing, mm -hmm. what I can do, and add different things to my game. Ty I get there, it's like I've already been there for a year. So he was he was fooled already. It wasn't even like he was fooled, it was just more I of a like I was prepared. Like now it was like, because now they had a feel of how I played. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like it was brand new to them. So when I was coming in there and telling Sam, Sam Dellenberg, run the floor. Like, give, give me the ball and run. Sam was following my lead. So how many games did you start the first game of the year? Yeah, I started from the beginning. It, that was, yeah, from day one. Okay. So we're going to leave that where it's at. Yeah, from day one I started. So you, But I, it wasn't like I, he handed me the ball. The keys no, 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 no. Like, I, I, I worked my behind off in, in, in the off season just – just preparing myself for when the first day of practice began. And people don't even realize this. You remember our workouts, Kips Bay, mm -hmm. over St. Raymond's Elementary School. I believe it was one day we was in it was me, you, Sat, maybe Dana, and my man Quan. You remember my man Quan? Quan, Lefty Quan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we had to work out, whatever, and we were shooting around. And then afterwards, you throw it up. You dunking it backwards. I'm like, yo, hold you, on. It's funny. It's funny you said that because, like I said, go back to when you were in the sixth grade and mm -hmm. you considered one of the better players. Mm -hmm. For me, people didn't understand how hard it was because as outsiders, evaluators, when they label someone good, young, mm -hmm. 
You want to see somebody else overthrown that person. You're sick of hearing the same name. Mm -hmm. So now sixth grade, you keep hearing the same name. Seventh grade, you're waiting for that person to drop off. High school, okay. Now, as a player, I'm thinking, okay, I got to prove myself to everyone that I'm still that top dog. Mm -hmm. But then also, I got to bring something new to my game every time so that when they see me, they're not going to look at the fact that, oh, he's dominating. They're going to look at, oh, he's yo, now. exactly. So, oh, yo, last year he was just going by everybody scoring. Now he, he got a pull up. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, now he's pulling up from three off the dribble. Mm -hmm. Oh, time out. He's dunking now? Yeah, yo. You get what I'm saying? So now it's not even about the competition. It's more about they in love with your progression, mm -hmm. how much better you're getting in different areas of your game. And you're I, I didn't know where that came from. I, I, no, nah, it was just, I just knew that because at the end of the day, I had to, I, I wasn't the tallest. So, mm -hmm. okay, if I came in every day and for four years straight, I'm out there diamond, passing, passing, passing. Mm -hmm. They're going to sit there and say, okay, we know he can do that, but mm -hmm. can he score? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or can he shoot? Like, what, is, what else is he bringing to the game? Yeah, when you was in the seventh grade, you was advancing everybody. But now, I got somebody that's 6'1", that can do the same thing you're doing. See your whole career, some ups, some downs. When it's all said and done, over 1,800 points. What was the assist number? Uh, it's funny, I came second behind Shy. Which, <laughs> which, which I tell him that he had better players than me. <laughs> but yeah, I came second all time. So okay. second all time, probably I'm top five in everything, every category. Threes, okay. threes made, minutes, you name it. So, so great career. Now we transition on to the league, right? Mm -hmm. Going to camp, Chicago. They're talking to you, probably your agents. Say, what is that process like? Because I've I watched it, but for the people who don't know, how nerve wracking? Where do you, where are you at? How was it on draft day? What does that look like? Just the whole draft night, just getting in the best shape you can. Mm -hmm. Because you're doing these workouts, you have time off after the season, so they want to see: Are you invested in basketball, or are you just? just doing it just to do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to take, you know, time out to really get back to the drawing board, make mm -hmm. sure that I'm prepared for all the workouts. Pro. Yeah, just being a, basically be a pro, mm -hmm. be a pro. And I think in college I was a pro. I didn't understand what it meant to be a pro, but mm -hmm. I, I had the abilities and I had the, the, the right, yeah, the, 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 the mentality. And I think, you know, being around, you know, certain other guys that were pros, mm -hmm. I got a chance to see how they attack, mm -hmm. you know, attack the game and they prepare themselves. So mm -hmm. for me, it was just more of like locking myself in the cage and just re revamping. And it's another, things. and it's another chance for you to prove yourself. Uh, exactly, because at the end of the day, once you leave that level of comfort where, you know, middle school, you're the best player. When you get to high school, you're no longer considered the best player. You got to earn it. Mm -hmm. Once you earn it, then you go to college. Same thing. You got to prove you're the best in the Big East. You're the best in college basketball. Then once you leave there in the NBA, they don't care about the college. You got these other dudes that you give them. So, so give, give the viewers... One misconception that people think about making it to the NBA and what it really means to play, stick, and, and, and be an NBA player. I think one thing Mark Jackson told me when I was in 11th grade was the game is 90% mental, 10% physical. Mm. And you're going to get mentally challenged as a professional. Mm. You know, you might be in a situation where you don't like things, you gotta be a professional. Mm -hmm. You might be in a position where things are going your way. You still gotta be a professional with that. You gotta show up on time. You have to, you know, it's, a, it's an everyday thing. It's not a once every week thing. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you gotta show up and, and be the best prof professional that you can be. The things that they're getting away with in high school, as far as, you know, not being on time, talking back to the coaches, not holding themselves accountable for things that they know they're getting away with is going to catch up to you at some point where, as a pro, they expect you to hold yourself accountable. And if you don't, 
it'll be right out the door. So you play Magic, Bulls, Clippers, um, Raptors, and it was one more. The Rockets. The Rockets. You get a chance to see different pros. Who was the one pro that you saw that made you go like, wow? I would say my first year playing with Tracy McGrady. I think Tracy was probably the most talented dude I have seen up close. Like just consistently because cooking. Yeah, it just he can do everything, literally. It just was the more of like it came so easy to him. So I don't think he pushed himself as much as he can. Like a guy like Kobe, I watched him and his mentality made him strive for greatness. Tracy, it was just naturally great for him. Mm. Natural. And I think if he, mentality-wise... If, if he, he was Kobe. If he, if he had the Kobe mentality... He might have been Mike. Yeah, because i seen games where... i never forget this game. We was playing against Denver, the Nuggets, mm -hmm. and one of the coaches said something to him on the bench because mm -hmm. he got fouled... They hit him on the on the wrist, mm. and one of the assistant coaches jumped up and said, "Like that wasn't no call." Up. And Tracy looked at him like, "What?" And he said something back like, "Yeah, that wasn't no call. You soft." Dude went off to get fifty, <laughs> and it was fifty without free throws. Mm. It was a just real 50. it was a real like a fifty ball. Yeah, three ball. Like he took my position. I was running in the corner. Like go ahead. Like and then in the locker room, I was like, "Yo, wow." Why don't you always do that? Like, you know, because he played with anger and it wasn't towards anybody on the court. It was towards that one one dude. He was like, let me show you if I really yeah. want to turn this up. And I was like, stop playing with me. It's funny because I was telling him, I was like, if you need me to do that every day, I'll be in your ear messing with you. Right, right. I was like, but that was, it was just like when he wanted to, he could just be different. He could be super different. And then when he was regular, he was different. Yeah, so but it he was, was different, like, different. Yeah, he had another level and it was just like, yo, dude, if you can just like if you always did that, crazy. Like ridiculous. So, so fast forward, you have your time in the league, you you get an opportunity to play internationally, you play in the D League, which is now the G League. Um talk about that experience from going to the league, international, D league, kind of going and just staying in that fight. What was the driving force to say, "All right, I'm gonna get back to the league. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove myself over here." Like, what was that? What was that journey like? I had a plan in a way. So you was low too. Yeah, I always was low, but I had a plan. So like, once I got the got to the NBA, I knew what it took to get to the NBA. But mm -hmm. you know, you still gonna have your questions of, oh, he's small, all over. Mm -hmm. But I still had to prove myself. So that's why at times they probably wanted to send me to the D-League. Mm -hmm. And I had to dominate the D-League. So I was able to dominate and get called right back up. Right. Which was a blessing for me. Some guys get stuck down there and they'll never mm -hmm. get an opportunity. And I know that's a different type of mental grind for them. But for me, my mindset was like, Oh, I'm getting right back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't no thought of, oh, I'm stuck here. Or, I'm getting right back. I know what I need to do to get back, and mm -hmm. let's make it happen. I'm going to put the work in to get back there. Um, overseas was different because, you know, you go to certain situations where you're not familiar with things. Mm -hmm. You're not familiar with the language. You might get a coach that doesn't understand you. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have, you know, maybe an American or somebody that kind of can help you or screw mm -hmm. you through it. So and it's different the amount of practices they do, they, the skill work they do, and it's not as many games. It's just a different lifestyle. And I think people get the misconception I always talk about on the show. People are like, oh I didn't make it to the league, I'm going overseas. No, it's not that it's not just like somebody's calling you like, yo, you wanna come to Germany pro eight? No. It's hard. It's hard to get over there. And people think it's so easy just to get overseas because they see somebody that they know that play overseas, or they look at it as, oh, you're not in the NBA, so... Oh, you automatically go. You automatically, you they got a slot. He was, yeah. was killing in college. Exactly, and they don't understand there's only two Americans probably per team, so... And, and the difference between here and there, you don't perform for three games. You gone. You gone, and, and sometimes they won't even tell you. They'll tell your agent. So, 
it depends on where you go, mm-hmm. you know, the situation. But it's not a cakewalk overseas and people think, you know, that's the easy way out. Mm. I'm going to go overseas and make some money. And some people ain't even making that much money, honestly. You know, but... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity and it's great basketball if you can kind of settle in, create a situation, create value for yourself, and you get to pick the situations. And now you're playing in the Euro League and you're getting paid substantial money and the team pays... Right, that that creates a great situation. So now fast forward, it's coming to the end, and you figuring out kind of what's next, right? When did you decide and say, okay, you know what? Was it something that made you transition? Was it an opportunity that came to you? What did it look like for you? Uh, well, I I had an opportunity presented to me from the NBA to mm-hmm. work for the NBA, and I thought about it as far as a player. How many more years do I actually want to, you know, take the, the time out to go overseas and go through that grind? Or I can progress in a new career mm-hmm. and and always... See, the thing about me is I always had a plan with things. Like, mm-hmm. even like for the NBA, my plan was to get pension. So, at the time, to go to the, to the D-League at the time, it made sense for me when people would be like, Oh, you can get several million overseas and go here. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's a one time shot. If I get back in this league I need this many more games. Exactly. And now I get the pension mm-hmm. and guess what? That's gonna be the long term kickback. Mm-hmm. So whatever I could have made in that one shot going overseas three times over. It's going it's gonna keep making later on. So for me that was my mindset with that. And then when it came to making the decision as far as with the NBA and them offering me a position, my goal was is it still is is to be in the front office of a team. Mm-hmm. So what is that. your current position with the league? Uh, right now I work with basketball ops. Okay. So you know I do a lot of scouting. I do you know I get to see the the inside of how the NBA is is ran. Uh, okay. You know they do a great job of creating these events. So you get a chance to see it firsthand. Firsthand, and and that's rare for it even former players to get that opportunity. Your way through the ranks in the NBA, and I'm pretty sure it's exciting, it's new, it's different, probably a lot of information. So now, fast forward, where do you see yourself five years from now? Is it still with the NBA, front office, GM, assistant GM? Like, what is your goal? You want to I coach? Mean, uh, I, I think, you know, I'm taking it one day at a time okay. right now, but, you know, Potentially, I, I want to see myself as being in the front office okay. of a team, uh, okay. whether it be, you know, head direct and scouting role or uh, assistant GM. Being GM. able to evaluate talent. Yeah. Now, now I'm, I'm going to get into something else. It's been said that you're a little skeptical as far as uh, judging talent. No, I'm not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. Messing with you. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But, but, but look, but look. I think sometimes people are a little bit too lenient mm-hmm. because we come from a different era. So when you're looking at a player, and, and like, what does your lens look like when you're watching somebody? What's the, what's the things that you're looking for in a player? Because now this is somebody who's an NBA player and you're getting a chance to talk to kids that are watching the show, parents who are training their kids to potentially be good student athletes. So coming from your lens, somebody who did it at every level, what are you looking for? My thing, I think I look for a lot in a player as far as um, can they play with other good players? That's one thing. Mm-hmm. Because if you're so used to being the man on your team and you've never played alongside someone that's as good as you or maybe even better than you, in the NBA, that's that's what every team consists of. On the show, we always try to get some insight and have a little fun with it. So now, obviously, you learn the game playing up in Soundview. You, give me your favorite Artie Green saying. You got him, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Four corners, you got him, kid. <laughs> Spread him out. Spread him out. Yeah. So, so um, uh, definitely want to take the time to, to pay respect and homage to your dad. I know he was a big influence in your life. I had a, the pleasure and the honor of, of meeting him. Um, and I know you're obviously making him proud. So what would be the thing that, that, that you would say that your dad gave to you that you'll always take with you and, and kind of 
keep his legacy alive? Uh, it's funny because he he was so different than the normal parent. I think I think but he, he was everybody's parent. That and that that's what it was. So for me, I I wanted to show him how much of a success I was, and right. to him, not to everybody else. Right, right. So he knew I was good. Got you. You know. Got you. And uh, that, you know, that that's something that you could never, uh, I would say, duplicate with anybody. Like, right. he wasn't the parent to put you on video and you know post you and do mm -hmm, all that mm -hmm. stuff because he he would say you could do it for yourself. Right. People would acknowledge how good you are or the type of person you are. Because mm -hmm. you're doing it, not because I'm doing it for you. And, and, and right, big shout right. out to your moms too, who was always there. Yeah. Your little sister who came and made her own yeah, yeah. Uh, path and, and, and got some buckets. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, she she did a thing in Maryland. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so y'all was two for two. Right? Yeah, and, and, and free my other, education. And my other sister too. She she uh, she does. Uh, she works at Columbia now. She okay, I never got a chance to meet your other sister. Oh yeah, she's the boss. Know. See, she <laughs> she's the one that runs everything. Okay, so copy that. so they we got like a Barrett uh, uh, enterprise there over there where you know what I mean. My dad was like the social worker. He made sure everybody was good. There you go. My mom was kind of like the overseer, but then mm -hmm. you had my sister who was... The CEO. A yeah, Asia, she, everybody who knows her, she definitely, she makes sure things is in order. She didn't play, but you know what? She held you accountable. Best player you ever played with? Sheesh. Best player I ever played with? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Tracy McGrady, but let me change it. Favorite player you ever played with? Um, I would say probably Sat. Kenny, Kenny Sat. Yeah. Why Sat? I mean, I it's, know why Sat. It, but it's just he chemistry. pushed you. He pushed me to be great, and I pushed him to be great. So, in a sense, like when he did certain things, I knew I was up next because I was younger. But I knew what what hard work we put into getting to that to that level. So when he did it, I was like, I knew I was right on the same track. You know what I always said about y'all two? Y'all was very different, but y'all was very much alike. Mm -hmm. Your work ethic, your determination, your will to win, being a winner, you understood sacrifice and team, but how you went about it was different. You know what I mean? Even down to the way you played. And the thing that I admire most about Sad, and we're going to have him on the show, is I've always felt like Sad did it his way. You know what I mean? Like when he was in the league, he wasn't going down like, like, I'm going to put it up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but he always been like that. It's yeah. funny because, like, me and him had conversations. He said he learned how to be a point guard from me. Mm -hmm. like, because people don't understand, Sat might have led the ACC. No, the, um, what conference? The Conference USA at the time. Mm -hmm. I think he might have led them in a sense as a freshman. He ain't never passed throughout all... <laughs> you know what I mean? And I played with him since I was like, right, right, I right. Played, we played with each other since we was Yo, 10, Sa 11 I didn't say it, Sa he said it. Hey, <laughs> he never passed the ball. Like, everybody who knows that played with Sat. So that's a bucket. No, listen, it used to be bad when we was young, where dudes would be like, Sat's coming, I'm going home. And dudes would show up and we'd have like five or six players because right, Sat, right. but Sat, Sat had a chip on his shoulder because he heard about us over at Kips Bay come from Castle Hill, so he wanted to prove to us how good he was. Mm -hmm. But we was just like, yo, we got another good player where he has something to prove. So now as you got older, you understood. Oh, that's why you wasn't passing it, because you wanted the approval from us to be like, you nice. And, and here's the last question. Toughest player you ever played against, who made you work the most? I don't know, because I just feel like it's a lot of people that that challenged me because what's what comes to mind is it a game situation like man i gotta everybody had their own tactics like mm -hmm. their, their own strategies their mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't like one particular person that mm -hmm. was like yo like just made it super tough if everybody had a plan to play against me big east who was the who was the best battles against mm, i would say yukon UConn was a big battle. Uh, Ruff has always played as tough. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, it was, 
can't think of one in particular, but okay. the whole Big East was tough, of honestly. Course. Like of course. You, you you know, one day you go up to Syracuse, the next day you got a game against UConn, next you in Notre Dame, next you all the way in West Virginia. Then you over at you know what I mean? It you was somewhere where you literally can Yeah, you can literally go 0 and five and that could be your season. Yo, within two weeks. More than anything, man, wanna say thank you. Rice. Thousand and a thousand, eighteen hundred. Just gotta make it clear for the people. Professional, working in the, in, in administration in front office of, in the NBA. Appreciate you, man. Dre Barrett signing off. Bottom to the top. This is your boy Dre Barrett. You watching Bottom from the Top Hoops.